part two. What is so let's discuss signs and symptoms. All right, so we're gonna breathe oxygen in. Oxygen is gonna come in and then oxygen is gonna come out. But it's gonna be a different amount in and a different amount out. So if there's no iron, then the iron cannot bind to the oxygen. And if that can't happen, then the body can't pick up oxygen. So what do you think is gonna to happen to the red blood cell? If there's no oxygen bound to the hemoglobin, is it gonna be a brighter red or is it gonna be more pale? Okay, so this is a sign. And over here, we're gonna have symptoms. It's gonna be pale. Remember, hypochromic, so the individual is going to be pale. They're not getting enough oxygen. So are they gonna have more or less energy? They're gonna have less energy. So they're gonna be fatigued. And by the way, a symptom is something that the patient describes to you. A sign is something that you can measure. Okay, so not enough oxygen is getting to the body. So what is the heart gonna do? Is it gonna work more or is it gonna work less? It's gonna work more. So we call that tachycardia. And because of that, the patient might say that they have chest pain. Are they gonna breathe more or less? They're gonna breathe more. So we call that tachypnea because they need to breathe more to get more oxygen in. Because of no iron, they won't be able to bind oxygen as much, so the lungs are gonna think that they have to breathe more. And because of that, they're gonna say they have shortness of breath. All right, so the red blood cells are getting destroyed pretty rapidly. So the spleen and the liver have macrophages that do that. And because of that, there is going to be hepatosplenomegaly, meaning the large uh, liver and spleen. Patients may also say that they have constipation. Another sign is called pica. Pica is when they start chewing on substances that they think have iron in it such as ice being a very big one. There's also clay and jur as well. Coilonychia is a condition involving the fingernails. The fingernails are very sensitive to oxygen. Normally you look at the fingernail, and I'm not a great drawer, but if this is the thumb, the fingernail bed is going up like that. But coilonychia, if again we draw the thumb, the fingernail bed is going down. It is actually concave. Chelosis is also another sign. That's where if you look at the mouth, I guess these are supposed to be lips, I'm not a great drawer, but if you look at the corners of the mouth, you're gonna see some sort of cracking or blistering going on there, possibly due to some sort of opportunistic infection. Let's discuss diagnosis. A diagnosis will be reached due to a medical history and a physical exam describing the signs and symptoms that we just discussed. If there is bleeding in the GI system, there's a test called a occult blood test. That tests for blood in the GI system from fecal matter. This is important, a CBC, a complete blood count, where you can check for the hemoglobin and the hematocrit. For hemoglobin, for females, less than 12 is considered abnormal. For males, less than 14. For females, the number is lower because due to menstruation, where they will be losing extra blood every month. The units for that are grams per deciliter. So this is an important number, especially for females. Make sure you remember less than 12. You can also check on the characteristic of the red blood cells we discussed before, looking for a microcytic hypo or hyperchromic hypochromic anemia. So the color will be very pale and the cell will be very small. Again, that's going to be an MCV less than 80. You can also check serum iron levels and also ferritin levels. Ferritin measures the stored iron. Now this gets used up first and then what gets used up after that is the serum iron. So you may see a normal serum iron and think the individual is okay, but you got to make sure to check the ferritin because the ferritin gets used up first. So that will drop first and then the serum iron will drop after that. Also, if kids have been exposed to lead, some sort of lead paint could be lead poisoning. Let's discuss prevention. The biggest prevention is to watch your diet. There are heme sources of iron and there are non-heme sources of iron. Heme is basically going to be 
your red meats, your oysters, and sometimes likes to get asked egg yolk, not egg whites. Non-heme is mainly going to be a green, leafy vegetables. Think of maybe spinach. Think of, you know, Popeye. You know, he always tries to get olive oil. So Popeye eats his spinach so he can be strong and get his iron. Also, iron enriched grains or cereals. Make sure infants less than one year do not drink cow's milk because the milk can bind or chelate to the iron which prevents absorption. Also make sure to test females of child bearing age for iron deficiency anemia. Those are the big highlights of what is for iron deficiency anemia.